Good afternoon and welcome. It's my great pleasure as the editor-in-chief of CCI to welcome uh, Dr. Femi Phillip on behalf of his colleagues uh, for uh, a discussion about their paper that was selected as a CCI editor's choice. Uh, their paper describes mitral clip for se severe symptomatic mitral regurgitation in patients at high surgical risk, a comprehensive systematic review. And Dr. Phillip, uh, congratulations, uh, you along with uh, Dr. Kapadia, uh, Dr. Svensson, Dr. Tuzu, and Dr. Uh, Arthapan uh, really did a, a masterful job of, I think, helping us understand more of where we're at in this evolving field. Uh, I'd like to ask you if you could to sort of uh, frame the methods and frame the, the point that you were addressing uh, with your manuscript. Thank you so much. It's a distinct honor to be selected, and thank you very much for the opportunity for us to talk about our paper. The majority of patients who are at high risk tend to be, have functional MR, and again, you know, repairing patients who have functional MR is a, is a difficult, uh, difficult problem. So we did a systematic uh, meta-analysis looking at all the, you know, MitraClip uh, papers that had been published in the, in the literature uh, in this high surgical risk group, and then compared it to the to an STS query of all cardiovascular surgeries that had been done on patients who had an STS score of above 12. We reviewed about 3,000, uh, you know, kind of PubMed uh, citations and got about 21 studies for the, you know, to kind of review everything. We also, um, in the STS database, we ended up finding about 3,000 patients that had been queried um, that had an STS score above 12 who had undergone mitral valve replacement and mitral valve uh, repair for this population. Uh, we found that, that you know, mitral clip was fairly effective. The mortality at about the mitral valve and mitral valve surgery were actually very effective. There was an over a 90% or 95% success rate with both procedures. Um, however, the 30-day the mortality was strikingly different, 3.2% um, in the mitral clip group, versus higher, about 14% in the surgical group. So uh, I think that brings up one of the important questions about the patients that you were correct. able to identify that were selected for mitral clip versus those that were entered as, as more of a, a everyday practice, if you will, for the STS database. So, yes, the populations are different in that, um, you know, the STS database reflects, you know, uh, a cross-sectional group of patients across, you know, who are having all cardiac surgery in the United States versus the mitral clip population, which is ex abstracted from, you know, publications, which has selection bias because a center is most likely going to be first choose the patient who would be most appropriate to have mitral clip, uh, a mitral clip procedure done and also is going to try and, you know, may very well report their best outcomes, you know. So, you know, I think that this is a different population, but I think the point of the paper is just to highlight the fact that you know, a, a minimally invasive approach to treat severe mitral regurgitation is needed. And I think people do benefit from the mi from mitral clip implantation because it's just a less invasive approach than, you know, can open heart surgery. Well, I think that's, that's one of the important points as well when you read through the outcomes. Certainly, our standard of care, we believe, is, is mitral valve repair, not replacement, although the majority of STS reported patients actually went on to have replacement not repair, uh, and I was struck by uh, sort of the difference in outcome become, between mitral clip patients, their time in hospital, ICU courses, the mitral valve repair patients, and, the, and those that underwent mitral valve replacement. And could you comment on, on those differences? I think those are very important points that you made. I think that the overall mortality stroke rate as well as the length of their hospitalization was strikingly different because the patient populations, you know, although they have, you know, they represent a high-risk group, I think one is being subjected to a more invasive approach. And I think particularly with the mitral valve repair and replacement, you know, it's, you know, it's open-heart surgery, uh, bypass, etc. And these patients tend to be frail. They have a very high STS score. So they, they are, their ability to deal with hemodynamic, uh, you know, kind of uh, their hemodynamic burden and the, you know, the risk associated with surgery is definitely higher. And I think that may in part explain the reduction in mortality, I mean, the reduced mortality with the mitral clip procedure. And I, again, you know, uh, this just highlights that something that is less invasive would actually do very nicely in this patient population. Although we don't know if 
this will affect long-term mortality and so on. And, and we are eagerly awaiting, you know, the reshape and uh, uh, co-op studies. Yeah. So I think co really illustrates uh, moving away from degenerative disease. Of course, our current approval is only in high-risk, non-surgical, degenerative disease patients. And yes. I think what you see in, in the STS database, given the limited number of repairs, is in fact our surgical colleagues are really treating a functional rather than degenerative group. And as you point out, uh, perhaps it will certainly have more information from COAPT, but uh, I think what you've shown us is that in the published data, in a patient population not likely to get a repair, but a replacement, that there really is uh, strong opportunities for us clinically. Absolutely. So I think one of the benefits of your meta-analysis is looking at a large number of patients that have had MitraClip. And what uh, would be great to learn are your thoughts about what specific subpopulations of patients you think uh, were highlighted as potentially benefiting from the MitraClip. Exactly. So, you know, we then looked at um, about, you know, a thousand patients within the my, who, who had had MitraClip with degenerative versus functional. As you said, um, you know, some functional MR. As you said, you know, the FDA has restricted the use of uh, uh, MitraClip for patients who have degenerative MR who had high surgical risk. Um, so we looked at the functional group and, again, the mortality um, at 30 days and the, the ability to actually technically do the procedure was actually equivalent. Although this is a much smaller population, suggesting that you know they, you know mitoclip may have a role in this high risk population, as you you know um, stated before, uh, patients who are having you know uh, mitral valve repair and mitral valve replacement or cardiac surgery tend to be in that functional group. So I think it tells us that you know there may be signals for safety in this population. I really think that that's where we need to frame the discussion um, moving forward. Great. Well, I know that our European colleagues have moved to at least a 2B indication. Yes. Uh, hopefully, uh, analyses like you and your colleagues have done, uh, giving us a broader uh, representation of cases and a comparison with surgical outcomes will help this discussion move forward, perhaps uh, to an even more frequent use of, the, of this kind of therapy. Thank you so much. And uh, we look forward to uh, learning more about MitraClip and the fine work that's coming out of your institution. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Bye-bye.